New Game Plus has been something that's been coming back in video games, and as such, we're seeing new experiences with games we've already beat. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 New Game Plus modes that change the game. Before we get going, I'm just gonna say real quick, we're pulling from the past year or so. New Game Plus, honestly, it's nice to see back. It's starting to maybe even be standard nowadays in games, which is super cool. And it ends up delivering some experiences you wouldn't normally get, so let's get going. Starting off with number 10, it's Assassin's Creed Mirage. Added to the game in a free update back in December, alongside a permadeath mode, the New Game Plus mode, uh, it has options that are basically the sort of thing we come to expect from these types of modes. You know how New Game Plus works. Uh, you beat a game, new option pops up, main menu, lets you play through story again, but with all the upgrades you had from beating the game, sometimes they add new twists on the formula, new gimmicks, but for the most part, Mirage's New Game Plus sticks to the formula. The only major change is it lets you skip past the prologue so you can immediately jump into the open world, which is a an appreciated change, don't get me wrong, but in comparison to every other New Game Plus mode I'm going to talk about, this one's pretty bare bones. Still, it's a lot of fun to go back and, and just clean house and early game missions with all the tools and upgrades from the end game not challenging at all but that's the joys of the new game plus it's a victory lap and with our baseline established let's move on to number nine star wars jedi survivor after finishing the game you unlock the option to play new journey plus which has all the usual stuff you'd expect to see in one of these modes you got your skill points your lightsaber stances cosmetics pretty much everything it's unlocked at the start but the thing that makes this one a little bit more interesting is the addition of three extra perks that can be switched on or off at will. The one that's on by default is Warrior, which remixes the standard enemy encounters and makes them quite a bit tougher. Uh, even from the prologue, you'll notice the changes here. You're basically dealing with endgame enemies right from the start. <laughs> There's also your purity perk, which makes it so all the weapon damage is stronger, uh, be it from friends or enemies, so makes all attacks more lethal. And the last one, Trendsetter, it's just for fun. All this perk does is randomize Cal's costume when he dies, which is, it, it's funny sometimes. Uh, you can turn all this on and off at will, so if you just want to slaughter easy enemies, then turn off Warrior. Uh, personally, I love it when New Game Plus makes the game tougher or remixes enemy encounters. It's relatively minor, but it makes going through the game a second time a lot more interesting. And number eight is the Dead Space remake. Horror games tend to be pretty tightly designed. Uh, generally, they're linear. They usually aren't that long, so these games really do benefit from New Game Plus options. They add some nice replay. Um, Dead Space remake, one of the best in this regard. Uh, on top of carrying over all your weapons and upgrades, you can all unlock a new level six suit, and you fight new phantom variants of enemies, which are extra tough and pop up at the worst possible times. The remake does something else interesting as well. It adds more story content in the form of new text logs you can find around the Ishimura. There's also these mysterious marker fragments you can find, which when placed in a specific spot actually unlocks a darker ending for the game. What is it? It's a surprise, sweetie. This sort of thing can be divisive among players. Some people don't like the idea of having to play through a game twice to unlock all the story content. Uh, Near Automata, not for those people. But Dead Space does not go that far. I think it's kind of sparse, and it's definitely not really punishing players for missing out. All this New Game Plus story stuff feels like bonuses for dedicated players. Nothing's particularly essential. For a relatively short horror game, I, I think this kind of New Game Plus stuff is great. It doesn't just change up the game with new enemies, it expands on the story, but not fundamentally. Mentally, it just kind of in a way that feels like a nice reward. Uh, out of all the recent games with New Game Plus options, the Dead Space remake, easily one of the best. And number seven is Starfield. Uh, what makes Starfield unique is how New Game Plus is baked right into the game. It's not just a bonus feature, it's like a defining part of the narrative. Uh, spoilers for the ending of Starfield, of course, but when you beat the game, you don't just hit the credits and call it quits. You, instead, you like literally create a new universe and enter it as a Starborn. That means you start off with a new ship, new armor, and, and knowledge about how the previous universe went. It's kind of a mind-blowing way to restart a game. At the start, you're given the option to either start the story all over again, or just tell Constellation everything you know and skip the story entirely. Every once in a while, you get a new Starborn dialogue option uh, where you can use your knowledge, 
of what's already happened to your advantage. It's pretty ingenious, honestly. There are downsides. Um, you keep your levels, powers, and skills, but your items, outposts, and ships, they're all gone. Uh, the ship you spent hours meticulously building, it, it's gone. All your bases are cleared off the map, and you got to start over from square one. Uh, this is what keeps Starfield's version of New Game Plus from topping the list. There's actually too many reasons here not to do New Game Plus. On the other hand, you can actually start in a universe where Constellation is just a bunch of different versions of your own character. So, like, there's some crazy cool stuff to find this way. And we're just calling him Loner You. I work alone. Yes. <sighs> we know. At number six is the Resident Evil 4 remake. The game's New Game Plus options aren't the most amazing. It doesn't add new story content. There's no new enemy encounters, but this game is so good, those things don't really matter so much. When you've got a game that is as enjoyable as this game, you don't need a lot of bells and whistles to keep coming back for more. Uh, but there are some pretty decent additions. Of course, you get to keep all your weapons and health upgrades, and even the merchant shows up earlier, so you can collect all your guns before the first major fight. It's so much fun to just go back and decimate early enemies with your powered up weapons from the end of the game. Also, there are a few new tricks you can pull off. Uh, it's something I've talked about before, but I just love that you can actually ring the church bell by shooting it with a rifle during the big village survival section. It's not that easy, and the bell's pretty far away. It's partially obscured by trees, uh, but it's awesome that they just thought to let you do that. There's really nothing else here that's new exactly. It's it maybe a little disappointing, but it's also Resident Evil 4. You don't need a lot else, and the stuff it does bring, I do like. And number five is Immortals of Avail. Remember this one? Uh, well, it actually got a new game plus mode back in November of 2023, and it's not just some afterthought that they threw in either. You carry over most of the magic spells you learned in the regular game, but now you can upgrade your equipment past their normal endpoints, um, and it makes enemies tougher, which gives them new abilities. So uh, this is actually pretty fun, especially when you got to the end and you had all your powers unlocked, and going back through the easier game with tougher enemies, with the new attacks, it's, it's genuinely actually worth exploring. Some of the problems of this game have also been fixed in the months following it, and it's a little bit better of an experience to go back to. But the New Game Plus isn't actually all they added in terms of content. They actually added a bunch of endgame stuff and a new difficulty level, so there's actually a lot of stuff to mess around with here. Maybe worth revisiting. And number four is Armored Core 6 Fires of Rubicon. Pretty much every From game has some kind of new game plus mode. Sometimes they make the game a lot harder, sometimes they get easier, uh, but none of them do what Armored Core 6 does. This is a game with multiple endings, so going back through the story with new game plus is a no-brainer, but what makes this mode especially interesting is you can actually play through new mission variations where you work with a different faction on the same mission or do different things. Uh, what's especially interesting about this is it doesn't just happen once on your first New Game Plus cycle. There's even more missions unlocked on cycle two. Uh, almost like a near game, you get a lot of new content. Maybe not quite on that level, but I, I mean, it's there's a lot more going on. It really mixes up your options. It makes each playthrough a lot more exciting, and you get to see these missions play out with majorly different perspectives. It's just a fun game to play anyway, so this new stuff makes New Game Plus not just a fun addition, it actually feels almost essential. And number three is Remnant 2. Um, doesn't really have your traditional New Game Plus mode, but it does some interesting things with a similar idea. Basically, Remnant 2 is split up into different campaigns that are all partly randomized with some different level layouts, different loot, enemy encounters, etc. Sometimes entire regions are changed up entirely, and you'll fight new bosses or run into new NPCs. After finishing a campaign for the first time, you're given the option to either run an adventure where you re-roll the zone, but it's smaller and more condensed than the campaign, or reset the campaign and see how things are different. Now, what stands out about this system is just how much things can change from one run to the next. Certain areas can be radically different. Sometimes the entire story of an area is entirely changed. It's, it's really impressive, and it adds a ton of replayability here. 
The story's split up into multiple campaigns, so you're not really starting the entire game over again when you roll a new one. But the idea is mostly the same. You're talking your beefed up character back to a completed part of the game. It's just that the New Game Plus stuff is an integral part of the experience rather than just a bonus mode. And number two is Grime. Uh, this game's a little older than everything else on this list, but the new game plus wasn't added until June of 2023 with the Tinge of Terror update. Grime, uh, one of the strangest, most visually unsettling Metroidvanias I've ever played. And the devs have been hard at work updating and improving the game ever since it came out back in 2021. The new mode is one of the most significant updates to the game. It adds just an absolute ton of stuff. All the bosses are modified, made much harder. There's new phases, new moves. Enemies are re remixed. And they're updated, they put up more of a fight, there's new enemies and progression systems, there's new lore and music, it's practically a new game. They've changed or tweaked pretty much everything for New Game Plus. It's kind of absurd the amount of work they put into this mode. Uh, so many players probably won't even bother with it, too. Believe me, it's really worth checking out. There's even an entire New Game Plus exclusive boss, so there's a lot to dig into here. The game, along with the original Blasphemous, have some of the most impressive New Game Plus content in the genre. These guys really put in the work. And finally, at number one, Alan Wake 2, probably one of the most ambitious New Game Plus modes added to a game ever. The final draft isn't just a victory lap, it's a key part in unraveling the story of Alan Wake 2. What makes it so interesting is how it expands the ending of the game by adding new voice narration from Alan Wake, new collectibles, new live action segments, featuring a returning character from Control. Uh, really really worth it and a new ending that's a little more definitive than the standard one uh, pretty much all of this stuff is spoilers and if you're interested in this game you should check it out for yourself because there's some crazy stuff here it's not new stuff every second but there's enough stuff to keep it consistently interesting the actual gameplay elements not particularly changed up it's your usual new game plus stuff you get all your weapons already blah 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 but the new content, the new story stuff, it's what makes Final Draft so interesting. And Alan Wake 2 is perhaps one of the most compelling games ever made in terms of narrative. It's just really well done. And to add more to it that's equally well done, it's I, I, it's a no-brainer. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero, and we'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.